Chapter 2. It is Saturday and Freeburg's main street is buzzing. Cars of all shapes cruise up and down, searching for parking, while families stream in and out of the two big supermarkets, stocking up for the week ahead. Between the grocery shopping is the coffee sipping and cake eating, the clothes browsing and the younger ones piling into the game shop to play. But this day is special. The crowds are quicker, the clinking of spoons on cups louder, because today is the day of the show. Little Mikey makes his way carefully up Main Street, sticking to the quieter alleys between the bustling shops, knowing that little boys on their own find trouble if they're not careful. While he walks, he watches the traffic, his rider clutched in his palm. Mission showtime is underway, over, he murmurs. His rider stares straight ahead. A little green pickup trundles up the street. J and A liquor deliveries reads the writing on the side. Little Mikey shakes his head. Nope, he mutters to his rider, his eyes moving on. Morton Landscaping, for all your gardening needs. This one is cruising in the opposite direction. A white panel van with a green logo trailing along it like a vine. Again, Mikey's eyes flicker away. Not that one. Over. The rider nods. Van Staden's Meats and Delicacies, brought to you fresh. A small blue van is cruising up the street directly in front of him. It slides past little Mikey, obviously looking for a rare parking spot on the busy road. The van is an odd one. It seems canted at an angle. Little Mikey watches. A lucky parking spot opens up and the van slides out of traffic, one indicator blinking, waiting for the spot to clear. White reverse lights wink on and the little van slides in snug. It rocks on its axle, left and right, and then bounces as if a weight has been pulled out of it. Big Yun! Little Mikey breathes. A huge man comes lumbering around the far side of the vehicle. On his feet are size 14 steel-capped work boots. Around his body is wrapped a 4XL denim overall, and on his face is a grisly red beard. His red hair is held down by a blue and red baseball cap. He lumbers slowly, sweat beading in his hair despite the cold. When he reaches the pavement, he leans back against his little van and looks up to the sky, reaching into his pocket. Absently, he pops a mint into his mouth and begins to chew. Little Mikey pushes himself off the wall. He carefully smooths his clean blue pullover over his bright yellow trousers and then takes a breath himself. Let's go, Mr. Stansfield. Over, he murmurs as he enters the bustling sidewalk fray. Big Yan, he calls, scurrying through the crowd. Big Yan turns and his grisly face lights up with a smile. Mikey, he booms, startling a pedestrian with the sound. He reaches a huge arm into the crowd, making a way for the boy to reach him. High five, he rumbles, touching Mikey's tiny palm with his own soup plate. How's Freeburg's bravest rider? Ready to fly. And you, Big Yun, are you feeling strong? Big Yun winks at him. Of course. I bought you something. Little Mikey pulls his hand from his pocket, revealing a wrapped serviette. It's petrol for the champ. He peels the serviette aside, revealing a piece of sweet and sticky cook sister. Lovely, purrs Big Yun, plucking the bundle from Mikey's palm. His meaty fingers prize the cook sister from the tissue and it sails into his mouth. He chews slowly. Ooh, that's good. He turns to the boy, the pleasure of the pastry still in his eyes. You on your way to the show? Yes, but I got something to do first. You and me both. I've got a ton of deliveries, all for before one. He pushes himself off the van and begins to lumber around it. Where are you off to? My mama wants me to make a delivery to Mr. Langefeld. Big Jan whistles. Whoa, I got a delivery at the Fritz house just near there, all the way up the bloody hill. He clanks the back of his delivery van open, a blast of frigid air wafting out, reaches in and grabs a frozen pack of sausage. He tucks the heavy bag under his arm, then peers into the back of the van for the next. I hear there's going to be some trick riders. I don't even know if I'll make the show. What was that? Big Yun's grizzled head pops out again. 
this time with a second pack dangling from his fist. He finds a worried looking boy looking up at him. I was saying, I don't even know if I'm going to make the show. Little Mikey's hands are clasped before him. He wrings them together. I, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. See, if I walk all the way up the hill, I'll probably miss the bikes. Big Jan assumes a grave expression. Mmm, that's bad. Yes, so I was wondering if I could maybe help you with your deliveries. Maybe you give me a lift to the top. Just, just when it suits you. Big Jan frowns. Well, I mean, you're a little guy. Do you think there's really help that you can give me? Little Mikey steps forward and takes the bag dangling from Big Yun's fist. He staggers under the weight of it, the ice burning his bare hands. I can handle it, Yun. I won't let you down. Well, I don't know. Big Yun scratches his head. I'll carry every single bag. You can just talk to the customers. Big Yun frowns a moment more, and then a beaming smile appears on his face. Oh, Mikey, I was only joking. Of course I'll give you a lift, you don't have to help me. He reaches for the bag, but the boy swerves and totters into the busy stream of pedestrians. A deal's a deal, he shouts, shuffling towards a sign in big red letters on the shop front opposite. Mr. D's hot takeaways. Good kid, Big Yun mutters, reaching into the van for another bag and then banging the door closed. He steps into the bustling foot traffic, following the boy. Three bags later, the two are piling into Big Yun's van. The inside is littered with sweet wrappers. As little Mikey clambers into the passenger seat, he sees the big man has a fresh packet of fudge open on his lap. Now this is proper energy, says Big Yun, popping a slice into his mouth. We got to keep this pace up. He reaches forward and twists the key and the van judders to life. We got a full slate this morning. Everyone wants their meat before they go down to the show. He slides the van into the traffic. Do you think we can get there by one? Little Mikey asks, swinging his feet in front of him. He loves riding in Big Yun's van. It feels good to be so high off the street, the world sliding by in silence, and none of the kids to bother him. We have to. I'm pulling a truck at two. I got to warm up. Little Mikey giggles, taking his ride out of his pocket. I'm going to see someone fly. Hey! What kind of a fan are you? You should be looking forward to seeing me. I am. Little Mikey leans over and punches Jan on his massive shoulder, a crab tapping a whale. For everything on the ground, I'm watching you. But anything in the sky, I'm for the bikes. Well, okay, says the big man. I'll take it. It's show day, he shouts out the window, banging on his hooter. It's show day! The whole town seems to be shouting as the little van clears the dip at the bottom of Portgitter Road, gearing down to begin the winding climb up Freeburg Hill. A moment later, the two are turning into Squin Street, Big Yun peering at the houses on the right, looking for the number. This is a new delivery, a Mrs. Darling, he mutters. We're looking for 17. There! Little Mikey jams his hand out, the rider clutched in his fist, pointing at a home a little way ahead. The place is as neat as a pin, painted lilac, with petunias twirling up from the soil in front. Gotcha! grunts Yun, swinging the wheels so that the van swerves straight onto the patch of lawn. She wants just one bag of unfrozen chops. Let's get it done. Little Mikey nods, already having clicked his door open. He jumps just as the van comes to a stop. The front door of the little home opens. Morning, ma'am, bustles Big Yun, speaking to the woman standing in front of the house. She is dressed in lilac too, a skirt and blouse and neat pumps and a helmet of grey spray frozen hair. She beams as her house does, her hands clasped in front of her. Good morning. Is it... are you Mr. Van Staden? Oh no, lady, booms Big Yun. I'm just his appy. I'm Yun, a uh, strong man Yun, if you don't know, or even Big Yun. Pleased to meet you. He holds out his massive paw. Oh, uh, you're a, a strong man. She smiles gently as she touches his fingers with her own. That I am, ma'am. I'm performing at the show this afternoon. Will you be there? Well, I hadn't planned on going to the show. 
It's so noisy, you see. She looks up at him, light dancing in her eyes. What will he be doing at the show? Oh, various things, truck pull, log toss, that sort of thing. Big Yun pulls his clipboard out from the cab. You're looking for one bag of unfrozen chops this morning. Yes, that's right. I have some guests coming over later, after the show. Very good. My assistant is just getting that for you. You're happy, she smiles. Yun smiles too, catching the woman's humor. Ha ha ha. Yes, ma'am. It seems I do have an appy now. How are you doing there, Mikey? Coming! Little Mikey appears, careering around the back of the van, a big squishy bag of chops threatening to spill out between his clasped hands. Oh, look at you, cries Mrs. Darling, bending to the boy. What an angel you are. Please would you bring it inside and put it on my kitchen counter? Can you manage? Yes, ma'am. Little Mikey wobbles his way through the front door. But he's so small, Mrs. Darling whispers to Big Yun. Are you sure he can manage? Definitely, ma'am. My little buddy is the best delivery boy in Freeburg. Inside, little Mikey props himself against the white cupboards of the kitchen, tripoding his right foot as, swaying, he lifts the big bag of chops to his shoulder and slides it onto the counter. Oh, well done, Michael, calls Mrs. Darling, entering the kitchen. She tip-taps across the tiles, taking hold of the refrigerator door and opening it wide. Both Big Yun and Little Mikey pause at the sight of it. Big Yun's eyebrows shoot up as he peers inside. The refrigerator is full of food, containers and containers of it, all neatly placed and sealed. Wow, Mrs. That's a good stock of chow you have in there. Oh, thank you, Yun, Mrs. Darling beams. I love to cook. And I'm alone, so it does pile up. I hope my guest this afternoon will polish some of it off for me. She looks sideways at him. You look like you could handle a good portion. Big Yun's meaty palm comes up to cover the blush on his face. Ah, oh, you got me, missus. I do like to eat. Especially with your sport. I'm sure you have to work hard to make sure you have the right nutrition. Big Yun grins. That's true. Strong manning is a big food business. I got to eat constantly. He reaches into his overall pocket, searching for his invoice book. He fishes it out and immediately drops it on the floor. Yan, we got to go, whispers little Mikey, passing the book back up to his friend. Yup, yup. Mrs. Darling, thank you for your business. We must get going. It's a very busy day today. Oh no, really? I was hoping you'd join me for a little feed. I get so few visitors. She tip-taps over to the oven. Both watch as she reaches down and cracks the door. Immediately a smell fills the room, a scent so delicious that it wobbles the delivering pair. I'm making some eclairs. I'm sure you two would like one. She opens the door all the way, peering in. And there they are, a tray of eight perfect eclairs browning in the heat. Big Yun's eyes widen. Sure, he mutters. Mikey, I'm sure we got time to wait for just one of these eclairs. Little Mikey glares at the big man. We don't, he whispers. We still have Mr. Pencil in Waverley. It'll only take five minutes, murmurs Mrs. Darling. Why don't you have a seat at the table, Jan? And while we wait, I can warm you up some babuati. Big Jan's eyebrows shoot up another notch. Babuati! His giant feet are moving toward the little dining table. I'm sorry, little buddy, but I'm going to have to accept this challenge. Little Mikey steps in front of him, but the lumbering ship of Big Yun doesn't stop at all. Mrs. Darling's chair groans as he lowers his bulk into it. I made it just last night, sighs Mrs. Darling as she sweeps the door of her refrigerator open. I haven't touched it yet. She pulls out a tray. On it is a pristine babuti its creamy yellow surface unbroken, simply demanding that somebody dig in. She sends a smug smile to little Mikey as a spoon appears in her hand. Would you like a taste, Jan? With a flick, she slices through the soft surface, and in a flash she has the bite of big Jan's mouth. Now, tell me you don't want me to warm you a tiny slice. Without losing sight of the bite, big Jan murmurs, Sorry, little buddy. I'm afraid we're taking a detour. But what about Mr. Pencil? 
Just because you're not hungry doesn't mean you should stop your boss from getting his nourishment, declares Mrs. Darling. Big Yun leans forward and swallows the offered bite. He groans in pleasure. Mrs. Darling taps her spoon happily and turns to her refrigerator, triumphantly pressing it closed. Tell you what, says Big Yun, his eyes on the plate Mrs. Darling is laying out for him. Why don't you take Mr. Bansell's delivery? He's just around the corner. When you finish, I'll be finished too. Then I'll come pick you up. I'll meet you on the corner of school. The smell of warming babuati reaches both of their nostrils, joining the swirling scent of eclairs from the oven. Big Yun's hand curls around little Mikey's forearm. His eyes find the boys. I promise. We'll go down to the grounds at one. If I have to, I'll do the other deliveries later. Little Mikey steals a glance at Mrs. Darling. The woman is humming a tune as she spoons salad onto a plate while her microwave hums along too. No, it's okay, he sighs. I'll take Mr. Pencil's delivery and I'll meet you at the corner. Then at least we'll be ahead. Little Mikey turns to go. Buddy, he turns. Mr. Van Staden is doing some catering at the show. Take this armband. It will get you in down to the pits, just in case. Big Yun slips the band around the boy's wrist, twisting it double to make it tight. You never know, he says, as the microwave pings and the smell of the babuati weaves all around them. Little Mikey makes for the door, just as Mrs. Darling places a plate piled high with steaming babuati in front of the big man. She looks at him with happy eyes. Now, Yan, tell me, just how heavy is this truck you're going to pull? She leans forward her smile lighting her sweet face.